Well, hello, folks. This is Bill at Bill Reddick Outdoors. Man, y'all have heard me say before that some days are just better than others. Well, that goes for weeks, too. Some weeks are just better than others. And my last week started out by taking a trip to my son's and going to church with him and to see my youngest of five grandkids be baptized. Now all five have given their lives to Jesus. Papa's prayers are answered. And then the next day we loaded up in the car and we took off from South Mississippi and drove way up, I think it's about 12 hours to Kentucky and spent a week vacationing with them. And we saw some pretty interesting things, but everywhere we went, there was an awful lot of background noise when I was trying to shoot some video. So I just decided maybe I could cut all that background noise down real low and do some narrating, but I wanted it to be real good. So I put in a call to Morgan Freeman, but he was kind of busy. So I guess y'all just stuck with me narrating. Oh, well, if you can't get the best, get the second best. <laughs> we finally got there and we walked through this beautiful garden with this waterfall. As we got to the top of the hill, we soon found the dinosaurs. You walk inside the building and there's a skeleton of a woolly mammoth. Dinosaurs up top and <laughs> prehistoric birds flying around over your head. All kinds of creatures. And of course you would know I'd find a fish. I looked around for a hook and a line, but they didn't seem too keen on that, so I just watched them for a few minutes. They make you feel kind of small, and I couldn't leave out. The most famous one of all, I guess, is old Mr. T-Rex. <laughs> He'll be coming up here. There he is. The next day was the Ark Encounter. Man, when you first walk up to that thing, you didn't realize just how big that joker is. That thing is huge. It's almost unbelievable. The longer you stand there, the smaller you get. When we got inside, we saw how they may have stored water and feed and grain for themselves and the animals in these pots up against the wall and these pots scattered out inside. And we also saw the cages where they would put the animals and keep them and feed them for the trip. We ended our day with a concert. It was good. While I was at the Ark, there were some places around there that were selling camouflage. And it reminded me the hunting season is coming up pretty close. So I thought I'd buy me a new camouflage hat for hunting season. It says the Ark on it. And I know <laughs> things that tourist attraction are really expensive, but good camouflage is hard to find. <laughs> you might want to think about that one for a minute. The next day, we decided to go to Boonesboro where they got a replica of Boonesboro Fort where Daniel Boone spent a lot of years. When we got to the fort, this is what the outside looked like. And we got out and walked in. Now you can see a view from the inside. It's just cabin after cabin. Each cabin had something different where you could learn things about uh, weaving, thread. Here's some shots of a old surveying equipment. There was a blacksmith in the center of the fort that you could watch. We got a lesson on how a flintlock shotgun works. And they even had a flag in the center that had the 13 stars for the 13 colonies on it. It was a pretty neat place. We got to see that people lived hard lives back in those days. I'm thankful for all the modern conveniences that we have today. 
And after we got out of the fort, we took us a trip to a, a place that's called a Natural Bridge. It's up on top of this mountain. It's a rock formation that makes a bridge. But while we was looking for it, we found ourselves driving straight through a mountain. I told y'all we ended up driving straight through a mountain. You had to cut your headlights on. We got in and wondered what it'd be like if you cut your headlights off. Oh, it got dark pretty quick, so it didn't take us long to turn our headlights back on. But if you'll notice, this thing is so narrow, it's only room for one vehicle. So if someone was approaching from the other direction, they would see your headlights and they would have to back up and back out of the tunnel and give you room to get out. Or either you would have to stop and back up because there's no way two cars could pass in here. And it was fairly long. It took quite a few minutes to get through it. And at places you wondered if the rocks was going to scrape the side of your car. But we made it out the other side. Next stop, the Natural Bridge. And I had the bright idea to ride the chair lift up to the top of the mountain. We fixing to go straight up to the top. That ride messed with me just a little bit, but I'll have to say it was worth it. When we got up there to the top on that natural bridge, looking out over that mountainside, it was beautiful. Just another example of God's almighty power. I talked my bunch into riding a sky lift up to the top of this thing, and I didn't think about how being up that high, just swinging on a little old bitty pin, might mess with my old stroke head. <laughs> It like it did me in. <laughs> yeah, I forgot that once I got up to the top of that thing, I had to get back down. I had to ride that sky lift to again. <laughs> we finished up our week at the Aviation Museum of Kentucky. We saw common little Cessnas. We saw big old fighter jets. Some helicopters you could climb in and look around up close and personal view of a Blue Angel jet, an Air Force fighter jet, even older planes, <laughs> and also some experimental aircraft. They had a little bit of it all. Oh yeah, I almost forgot one thing that's very important. If you got a little trouble walking around like I do, it would be a pretty smart thing to rent one of those little battery powered scooters to help you get around. Man, that thing was a lifesaver for me. And always remember folks, whether you at work or play, I hope you have a nice day. This is Bill Reddick Outdoors. See y'all.